From uh, Pastor Sophie's um, inspired bed, I pick from the streets uh, a long time talks in my heart. There are thoughts that you have, but you are still meditating on it and you just leave it in one side. I have so many meditations from the Lord that. I put aside I'm waiting for more light to shed on it, but I believe <coughs> for God to pick up pick this thing up for us in our in the heart. Or for God to allow me to pick this in the spirit. He will breathe on us and he will speak. I believe God on that. He speaks. <clears throat> so I titled it Where is God's beauty is configured? And we're talking about the beauty of the Lord. How does this beauty couple up? What constituted to make God beautiful? How does this beauty consist? What are the things that come together to become the beauty of the Lord?
That's the word I pick it. He used to see Dick some when we were young. He's not only when we were young, even till now. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. And he manages in the beauty of the Lord. That's the area that I remember. Beautiful Lord of creation, the joy of the whole heart. Is Mosai and is a scripture that you use. Is Psalm 48. Now, according to the Hebrew Bible, I have it. I don't always use it, but sometimes, once in a while, if the Spirit of God travel my heart into that direction, I use it. Uh, the vision of um, beauty is pleasant to the eyes. Pleasant to the eyes. And the Spirit of God is even giving me a word called beholding. <laughs> beholding. Good. I had a phrase, phrase in my heart. It's a scripture. But in phrase form. In Psalm 17, verse verse 15. Is it as for me? I will be vindicated. And we see your face. I will see your face when I awake. I will be satisfied and see your likeness. Because I am righteous, I will see you. Now it means that it is the righteousness of God that can behold the face. Of God. Amen. There's another scripture that many people quote. Is in um, Second Corinthians chapter three, verse eighteen. Second Corinthians three eighteen. I just have to follow the spirit. This is not even where I want to start from. I want to start from that scripture in the Revelation that Pastor Sophie quoted. Before I begin to piece the thing, but I'm just traveling with the spirit. As it moves, I move. He said, but Second Corinthians chapter three verse eighteen. He said from seventeen he said Now the Lord is that spirit and where 
where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Second Corinthians chapter three, from verse seventeen. So that's where the scripture started from. They started from, if you go up, more on. I just want to talk about here how many of us have quoted the scripture many, many times without, or let's say partially, or even with fullness of the understanding of God. You know? But sometimes it's good to borrow from others. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. I change into the spirit image from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, from verse 17 it says, The Lord is that Spirit. Which Spirit? That Spirit called Christ. So Christ is God's spirit. Now, hmm, what I'm saying, I don't know how to express it. There is nothing on this heart that can be used as an example. There is nothing. You know, sometimes they will say, uh, my language. Is so raw that English language cannot ex explain it. That English language is so limited to explain, to express what that language is saying. Uh, one of uh, Theophilus' song, I think this song is about Was I trying to explain, to interpret it in English? Say it means pray. Pray, oh, pray. You come to level, you say, English is so limited to express this language. So that's what I'm saying in spirit. Holy Spirit brought something in my heart, in the highs of my heart. And I don't know, I don't have things so just to explain it. But, you know, let me just see how, how to explain it. Now you form, or let me say, Holy Spirit will help you to. So it will form an image in your heart that it is only you that can understand it. That image might even be an image that you don't even have something around to express it. And you can also use simpler ways to explain it to you. Now, Christ is the Spirit of God. It means that what, you know, the purpose of the Spirit is it helps you to express yourself. Yourself in God. Because there is yourself that is not in God. That your spirit man help you to express to. So, Holy Spirit express Christ, Christ express God. Bible says, Jesus said, it will, He said, when the Spirit of truth comes, it will, see, I don't like to talk like this because they will tell you, what do you mean? Do you mean Christ and Holy Spirit are different? That's not what I'm saying. One help one to express is still one Spirit. See how he put it here from verse 7. He said, He said, now the Lord is that spirit. This Lord here is capital L, small letter O R D. When you see the Lord, everything in capital letter is talking about God, the owner of heaven and earth. 
But when you take, say capital letter O, small letter R, D, small letter, it's talking about the owner. The owner. Both of us are the owners. There is this the owner that owns everything. And there is this the owner that uh, formed and made. It is still the owner that can do all things. He can do all things, but God is the kind of person that he gave he share himself. This thing I'm giving you, I've done it, but I want you to bring it out. So you say the Lord is that spirit, capital S. If you don't take time to meditate on this, you'll be confused. That verse you don't can confuse you for a long time. You now say where the spirit of the Lord is. That is where the confusion is. He said the Lord. Is the spirit. If, we, if I'm the one who write that Bible, I'll say the Lord is the spirit. Where that spirit is, or where that Lord is. It's so simple that you think that you understand it, but sometimes it, it's confused. Now you now say, but we all with open face beholding. See, this beholding is the beauty. What we are beholding. See how I like to put it. And we all with who with unveiled faces. Contemplate the Lord's glory. The beauty of the Lord is His glory. Now, it's the third time the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, will bring it to my heart. You know, Naturally, let's just, you know, I have a wife, so. But I just want to say this to every woman. If you get into their rooms, you will see makeup table. You see makeup table. And you see all kinds of things there. Things that you'll be thinking, how come? It's not that they are not beautiful. Let's say probably this thing has become a tradition or it has become a consciousness in your heart. I don't know how to explain it. Now those ones they use that is not what makes man or woman beautiful. Joy. Sorry, that is not the beauty. I, 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 I always be like, you know, I we have this kind of thing when we're younger, all those times that we're still looking for our wives and we have all kind of clothes, and you probably you get one and. You have so many quotes. He said, what makes you different is what makes you beautiful. Beauty is not what you put everywhere. Beauty is not even how you dress. You, the way you dress is okay. He said they will address you based on the way you dress. But that is not always true. Some places like this countries that we have like united kingdom that we have or like u.s all this uh, overseas you know uh 
you see pastors wearing trainers, wear jeans, you know, you wear clothes according to the weather around. You don't wear clothes because, you know, because the official clothes is suit. So, uh, you don't put on suit when everything is hot. So you have to put on maybe t-shirt, you know. So, so I'm just trying to tell you that the way you dress in some places is according to the weather. See how I dress this morning. It's because of the weather, not because I want to, you know, all these clothes, they are very, very cheap here. But what I'm trying to say is that they will address you the way you dress in some places. Yeah, people just want to talk to you. <laughs> That's it. That's it. But what I'm trying to say is that there is something about you that no matter how you dress, you still express the maturity. You express yourself, you solve problems. Not necessarily how you dress, not necessarily the makeup. You still solve the problem, the inner beauty. Is always there. So when we're talking about the beauty of God, the beauty of God, a righteous man must behold it. Now the word behold, it can be used like maybe you hold an object. It can also be used more, not like using your hand to hold. It's like what you look into. When you be old, is the wisdom of God you are able to know. Is the light. Now, the face of God that this scripture is saying is not face like this physical face you, is, that is my face. Like, it's not literally face. The face of God is light. When you say beholding the face, you are looking into the light of God. And this says is from glory to glory. You say we are changed. So what makes you change from glory to glory is based on what you are able to hold on from levels to another level. What makes you different is what makes you beautiful. What makes you beautiful is not the outward appearance. Beholding is looking into the light that comes See, light of God comes from within because the Lord is the word. And he said, Thy word is thy is the is thy lamp unto thy feet. Feet is your walk with God. So thy word is thy light unto thy feet. It means that you walk with God according to the light of God you have beholding.
if you have not accumulated the light of God, which is the face, The Bible says no one has ever seen God at any time. Heart eating. Now this scene is not God appearing in front of you. This scene is appearance or revelation. You no, know, the word revelation is what God reveals. So he has a light. He's the custodian of light. But he reveals it to you as you can take it. That is what revelation means. Now, understanding is as re revealing it, you are assimilating it. You are comprehending it. That is understanding. One is revealing. The other one is comprehending You are this. You are the light of the world. Means that you are to reveal the knowledge of God that you have beholding. to others. Amen. The, that is your beauty. You are expressing. You are, you are shining out your light. Colors in the spirit are cold. I don't know how to explain. Seven colors of rainbows. Stones. Lightnings. Voices. Thunders. How will a custodian of all these things not sit on the throne? Now, see, the throne of God, let me tell you, your seat in, this, in the realm of the Spirit. Your seat in the realm of the spirit is based on your maturity. Your seat, if they send you to a country, if God send you to a country that is full of witchcraft. How do you able to handle the heat? Let me tell you, you can be in the in the midst of some people. You want to run away. And you can be in the midst of the people, of some people, and you still stand. The reason you want to run away is that because that environment. There are some parts still in you. There are some holes. They are still communicating from the outside world into your in inner realm. Those parts have not been worked on. So, you cannot undo that it from that environment. You will run. But there are some seats that when you, there are some seats you have, the expression of your power, that you can sit anywhere. See Jesus, the only light in the midst of darkness in his own days. 
He stood and he stood and he is not only standing. He's not only sitting. He stand, he walk, he demonstrated powers, he He taught people how to know God. But with we hope with open face, beholding, he said in the present tense, as in a glass. The glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. So when God wanted to make man in his own image, he wanted to make him. Into the same image from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. It is Christ that teach God. It is Holy Spirit that teach Christ. But Holy Spirit that teach Christ. It's like Holy Spirit is the one that teach Christ and God. Jesus said, I wanted to call you other time that. We only speak to you what he is. And he will bring glory to me. He said, Serious matter. To showcase your beauty. All those colors. Has places. That is meant for. I like this verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 7. He said, but we have this treasure. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7. We have this treasure in hitting verses. Ah! That the excellency of the power May be of God and not of us. That is your beauty. Your beauty is internal. God will try to give us this diffusion. Is it like, like the color of the jasper? It means that there is something that has to do with color and stone. <laughs> color and stone. And these stones, they are not in the same formation of materials. If you see diamond, it's the most expensive stone in the world. But it's not as beautiful as gold. Diamond is the most expensive stone in the world. But it's not as beautiful as gold. Gold is even more popular than diamond. 
say gold, but people can kill. And this physical gold is not in the same realm with spiritual stones. In Psalm 91, you see, even though I walk, no, it's not down, down is Psalm 23. Psalm 91 says, uh, Here's the scripture. Okay, I think I will read it all so that I can click it. Who ever dwell in shelter of the most high? Okay, whoever he that dwell in secret of the most high shall dwell abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, surely he shall follow not the best and shall follow me. Shall not be afraid by night, nor the eye that fly by day, nor the person that walk in the darkness, nor the desire that waste that no day. The thousand shall fall at her side, the thousand at her right hand, you shall not come near thee. When with her eyes shall we be old. You see, <laughs> that's not even what I want to see. You see, only with our eyes shall we be old. So we use eyes to be old. Amen. That's what I was saying the other time. Sometimes, no, I preach, I will not give you. I preach scripture. I will not go and so if you search very well, you will see that everything I'm saying is based on scripture. I said the other time that normally we use your you all use your heart to hold something, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now in in the spiritual realm, we use our eyes to behold the face. Only with thy high shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Yeah. And see. So when you behold, you see. Let's speak that fast. It's only uh, they was talking about, you know, the area I was talking about. But what only with thy highs. Shall you be old and see? And see. And see the face, faces. You see the faces, faces here, they are light upon light in their different segments. So coming, or maybe seeing an angel in your dream appearing to you, or maybe you have spiritual sight that you can see when angels are around. You see all kind of these, all kind of creatures of these angels. Some you can't even look at their eyes. They said in the time of Jesus, the disciple cannot look at the eyes of Jesus. They don't know how to describe him. It's now that they're telling them that Jesus is a white man. Jesus is a black man. And out of all the children, is the only black man. So they don't even know how to describe. You can't really cast him away. They can all say all, all kind of sin. So only with their eyes shall you behold and see. And see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, which is thy refuge, even the most high, that habitation. Habitation. You can stay. See, the only one, you know, sometimes we say that we let's, uh, the presence of God is there. That is anointing upon. But if you carry the presence of God everywhere, <laughs> do you know there is this evil spirit that called Jesus, say, what are you? What have we done for you, or what thou art have we done with you? You are the son of God. 
evil spirits. Evil spirits saw Jesus and they say, You are the Son of God. And Jesus says, Shut up. Be quiet. This is not the time to start a publicizing me everywhere. This is not the time to be publicizing me. You don't need to be advertising me now. Not this time. Another person that agrees with that kind of satchel is Paul. The Jews will say, Paul, we know. <laughs> if you are walking on your streets, or you are being sent, or God led you into the wilderness, some countries are wilderness, some environment, the heat, the spiritual heat there. You enter into some rooms, you will not, you will not see a portal. They will never be open. Level. You have to pray. You have to pray and pray and pray. Imagine you are in a room and there is no, there is no ventilation. The heat wants to choke you. Or let's say you enter to the lift and the lift goes pro, got problem. And they say, oh, this is a no, this is a this is a body you press in the in one hour our engineer will arise. And you have to stay in that that broken lift. Choke. No ventilation, nothing. It's the same way you are praying in a place and there is no open heaven. So you have to dig it out in the street with prayers. Some people cannot even pray for one hour. Some people cannot pray for 20 minutes. So some people in the see see this scripture. Because thou art made the law which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. You have the presence of God in you, and you still come into the presence of God. You are the carrier of God. You are the custodian of God. You, you see, God is light and he dwells in light. That was why God, who is light, can send his light. God, who is light and dwells in light, he has all the light to go to this world and be the only custodian of light in the midst of darkness. He said, arise and shine. How do you shine? If you are not beautiful within, voices, lightnings, thundering, these are what co constitute to God's beauty. This is what consists, configure God. As one that is placed sand to the eyes. <laughs> this the this under beauty is set up. The Bible says in Genesis 3 when Eve saw the apple, the Bible says it was pleasant to her eyes and good for food. Food, what you consume is food. Anything that you consume is food. It's not only literally donuts and McDonald's you put on the table. 
anything that you like 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 any teaching you you listen to and you consume that teaching is food. He saw the apple, she saw the apple was pleasant to the eyes and good for food. Because Satan told her, the serpent told her a lie. You don't know how God described Satan. When he was still the morning star. Beautiful being. So what you express, the way you talk, is based on your beauty, your inner beauty. You see that revealing? Okay. We are not even going. Uh, okay, I think I've seen it now. Okay. I've seen it eventually it's in verse 12. You see, let's start from verse, let's continue from verse 9. And you see, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, that habitation. There shall no evil before you. Evil has his own beauty. They attract you with their own beauty. Lost. You know, the loss is. is is an expression of repeat. See, the serpent is so corny, soft. That is part of his own, part of the things that constitute to his own beauty. They shall no evil before it means that. The expression of Satan will not come near you because you have you have God. I mean, you have God's views that you have looked into. You may have the beauties of God, and you are not looking into it. You are not beholding the face. Neither shall any plant come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angel charge over you to keep thee in, in all thy ways. To keep, they have to keep you in all your ways. Because your ways are his ways. Your thought has become his thoughts or his thoughts has become your thoughts. His ways has become your ways. Your ways has become his ways. That is the only or these are the only ways it will keep. It will command his angel to keep thee. You cannot do anything without his leading. Then God will keep your ways. When you are doing things outside of his leading, he will not keep your way. He will forgive you. You will fall. He will forgive you and erase you up. Because there is nothing in common with light and darkness. 
Holy Spirit will be in you. We tell you not to do something. You will do. You will fall. You will cry for mercy. It's there. It's listening. You make it to feel the thing. So that next time, majority of us, we don't want to pass through the wilderness. Or majority of us, God has taught us something in practical training. And we say, eh, I don't want to fail again. Because when you fall, you fall very well. He will forgive you. He will raise you up. Bible say a right, the righteous man will fall seven times. He will raise you up. He will always raise you up. Raise you up. So next time when you are getting closer, you don't want to fall. He will always be with you. But you because he is not in, when he is telling you not and you are doing it, he will leave you. He is in you, but he will not leave you like he is still there with you. But he will leave that path for you. I am not there. You are only walking alone. But those that God command his angel are charged to keep you in all your ways are those that their ways has become God's ways. God's ways has become their ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands or, or else you will dash your feet against a stone. You see that against a stone. You see that stone. That is what, that's where I'm not going. That's the scripture I was looking for. That stone You know how solidified stone is? If they throw stone on you, you will feel the pain. If you hit stone, your hands will smash. So stone is a kind of, is a, is a description of maturity. I'm going to say against a stone, these are stones. The Bible says, you walk in the midst of stones. Means that you grew. You grew. You travel and grew. You mature in the midst of other stones. You that you walk to and fro in the midst of stones. That was Lucifer in the midst of other beings. My church beings, like 24 elders. When you say walk, it's like you, 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 you learn from them. Bibles are full of course. You walk in the midst of stones as in you learn their light. You learn their beauties. Now, when God Bible is now said that they will keep it all the way, do you uh or else you would they will be the hope. Bear you up here, it doesn't mean that they will, they will hold you and be floating on the air so that you don't know. That's not what the Bible is saying. They will bear you up with us. They will, they will call you. They will, they, will, they, will, they will teach you. They will hold you. You will learn them. You will be in their habitation. You will always be in the presence of God. You will, you know what this another scripture, Proverb 8. Proverb 8. Yeah. 
Yes, Proverbs 8, um, 